Warning, this is an extremely bullish video. We might see a $270,000 Bitcoin and a $29,000 Ethereum. We might get an extended cycle, which is what the crowd doesn't expect. Look at my friend on the left here. His name is Amadeo. I call him Armadillo because he looks like one. Now, my friend Armadillo is on Ivan's show, so this is actually fantastic. I want you to know something, friends. Mr. Armadillo, he called the 2021 top targets to the tick from 2019. He called 69K Bitcoin. He called like $4,870 Ethereum and like really, really, really close within hundreds of dollars. And he won't reveal the exact bubbles and S&P 500 and correlations he just used to overlay to get them. He got, I guess it's private information, but he's used them again for this one. And he's, he's modified some stuff or how he thinks, but... I just found the fascinating, friend. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through his optimistic, moderate, and conservative scenarios. But it's amazing that he's got these price targets. So he believes this cycle will see, you know, 270K Bitcoin, $29,000 Ethereum. He's got three scenarios, friends. Let me tell you something. He believes in the optimistic scenario, 270K BTC, 29K ETH, which is insane. So it's about, you know, it's actually huge. It's not diminishing, really. It's actually going to blow. But he thinks this will be the last one. So it'll be actually kind of crazy. It, this is the perfect trap, right? We go because everyone thinks we're going to diminish, all of us, right? So if we do the same return, right, then everyone thinks, wow, no more diminishing gains. And then in the next cycle after that, we actually do a diminishing return. There's no more explosive growth. He also has a moderate bullish target here of 172K Bitcoin and 20K Ethereum. And then he has conservative. So these are dog shit. Now, let me tell you something, friends. If Ethereum gets to $12,000, let me tell you something. Every single person watching my videos, we're all gonna throw each other banana emojis. Because we've made it. $12,000 ETH, I mean, we've crushed it. We've absolutely crushed it. You know, even for example, in Pulse Chain, 170,000 ETH, uh, at 12K, friends, that is billions of dollars. Like, we are absolutely moonshotting just off that, just off that, okay? Now, this is why it gets a bit scary he's scary on the bullish side so he believes we're going to get the optimistic scenario but it will take longer than people expect to finish <clears throat> so he expects basically friends if you go back what, what he's actually saying here so he, he explains about it in different different terms and words but it's actually the mount gox ponzi cycle it's literally this cycle what he's explaining is this a longer period of up with these spikes where we just we just never fully collapse okay so he, he doesn't say uh, the fractal of twenty of 2015 to 27 Mangox Ponzi. He does not say those words, but reading his words, he says that. Now, he also believes this will be the last time we see huge explosive growth, but kind of makes sense, right? It would have been gone for way too long. By, by this point, friends, if you do the numbers of how many people we've onboarded into crypto, if we get these numbers, we pretty much onboarded a big, big majority of the people into crypto in the world. So after that, it gets more tough, but you still will be able to make, make it, but you got to do like, you know, do a lot more harder work, probably on like my, almost my level, probably not, probably not. You never need to work as hard as me, friends, but just to give you an idea of what's to come, okay? So he believes that yields will get insane, and there'll be lots of rehypothecated garbage, which will be shooting out the risk curve. So Igon layer, restaking stuff, and it'll just be, it'll get absolutely nuts. And trust me, more Ponzi's are going to form. It's going to be the next Hex, Olympus Dow, Luna thing that goes explosive. And good. Uh, look, it's sad that people are going to lose all their money at the end, but we want, me and you want that, man. We've been here for a long time. We're like, let's sweet. Sweet. Bring it on. Bring it on. Okay, you DJs, You want to gamble? Come, come in. Okay. Now, stay, the meme, friends, my prediction your friend Sami Prophecy, special here. Meme coins are going to look safe by the end of this bull market because you know what they are. You know what they do. They do nothing. You don't have this like overwhelming sense of like, oh, I could just take on infinite risk in this. Like these things are probably going to make, like they're going to throw more complexities and AI and yield stuff. You're going to be like, oh my gosh, you know, you're all just leverage on the ecosystem. So like if the speed, if Mr. Daddy Bitcoin goes down, you're all fricked. That's what we want to get to. We want to get to that point. That's the most important part. So he also says, friends, he believes there'll be a complete blowout in shit coins. His words, Mr. Armadillo. So what does that mean? Basically, he means what we've been seeing right now, like just huge supply of of, of uh, meme coins and altcoins, and like that will be exploding. And friends, the total meme coin sector is like 60 billion. Man, remember what I told you, friends, 
I want to see a meme coin at 100 billion valuation. Because 1 billion is not even exciting anymore. Like 1 billion, we're going for Land Wolf 1 billion. We're going for Dick with Butt, Teddy Bear 1 billion. We're going for P-Dye 1 billion. These are nothing, 1 billion. You know what I mean? So, because we understand, right? Because of liquidity and everything out there. Oh, it's crazy, right? It's crazy if this happens. So, the key is the Ethereum ETF. He believes that when the Ethereum ETF comes, basically everything changes. Everything changes. And it makes sense, right? Because everything is liquidity linked to Ethereum. So once the mums and dads start buying the Ethereum, they're basically placing a bid on everything that's locked up into it, okay? And also spiritually and financially altogether. So spiritually, yes, also financially, because like, for example, Richard Hart's got the 170,000 ETH in the SAC funds, okay? And why I'm why, um, paying this, uh, making you pay attention to this, uh, it, it kind of makes sense, right? Remember I told you, friends, well, Richard Hart, Richard FOMO buys Ethereum at 3,800, and I was telling everyone, going, look, yeah, the trade looks pretty trash because he dropped 30%, but he calculated his mind that he was like, look, man, I think this thing's going over $20,000. I didn't care about a couple of hundred bucks now. I can't afford to miss this. I have to get in because I just waited out. You know what I mean? That's at least, that's why I said, friends, captain's call. I told you how many times captain's call. It's like, yeah, you might not agree with it, friends. I don't even have an agree or disagree. I'm just like, you know what? You're the billionaire, not me. That's it. I know on average, you're not going to get everything right. However, but 99% of your stuff, like on average, is, is going to do well. That's it. I don't I, like, I don't know. Okay, one thing here and there, maybe it changes. I don't know which one's going to be the winning or the wrong decision. It's not up to me. I just know, hey, you, you know, um, repeat these enough times, there's winning decisions to be made here. So these numbers are enormous. They're absolutely enormous, friends, just to tell you, because a $29,000 Ethereum is $3 trillion valuation. So I'm licking my lips at like a third of this, friends. If Ethereum hits $9,000, that's $1 trillion valuation. That is huge enough as it is right now. Now, this is Mr. Armadillo. He's with Ivan here. So you even have his words. If you want to pause this, you can like read it through. The risk curve is rising quickly. Just everything I've explained, right? Other cryptocurrencies, shit coins will pump hard. Most will be completely wiped out just as in previous cycles. This cycle will see more mean reversion than before. So that's where it gets interesting, friends. And your friends, so many friends, literally the prophecy, what I've been telling you, I organize coins in cycle one, two, or three narrative, cycle one, two, or three age. When he's calling for a mean reversion, friends, he's talking about DeFi. Now, DeFi was in 2020, and I've mentioned to everybody, DeFi is still a cycle two narrative. People are treating it like zero, like oh, like it's a cycle 10 narrative, as in it's never going to pump ever again. It's not payment solutions like XRP. So all we know is we, me just doing all the research, I'm like, well, okay, it's DeFi, you know, Pulse Chain, Pulse X Hex, they're all alternative uh, cycle two narratives. They don't, and Oracles as well, they don't pump in a Bitcoin halvening gear traditionally. They, they're they not the new tech. They're not the hot, sexy stuff. However, they pump usually towards actually the real heated part of the bull market. You have a another surge, another pump. Now, you don't get the life-changing games like number one. However, it's still an amazing bet because you have all this information to confirm your bias now because you don't have to put a lottery ticket into Pulse Chain, for example. You can put like 300 lottery tickets, not financial advice. I'm just telling you like, wow, because, you know, you have more of a story, more of a backdrop, okay, to do this. It's the same thing. You see why a lot of people DCA buying hex because they're like, you know what? Okay, maybe you never get to three bucks. I don't know, but I like the thought of you hitting 30 cents from one cent. That 30x, friends, like I told you, man, if you invest six months of your life into something that does a 30x, six months of living expenses, you end up with 15 years. That's why the power of this is super important, okay? So I've also mentioned here, I've got to play some nice laser beats because this is actually cranking really hard, friends. Right here. Pulse, Pulse X, Hex, Inc. could all do a 100X from today. Yeah, I can't believe I'm even murmuring the, 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 the words to say this, but yeah, like if you give me a, I remember I told you, friends, so many times, our valuations, we're just leveraging on Ethereum. Okay, give me a $29,000 ETH. That's about 3.5 trillion valuation, three, three and a half trillion. Okay, if you give me like a 3.5 trillion valuation of ETH, sweet, I can see. Pulse chain, Pulse X and Hex at like 300 billion, which is 100X from today. Yeah, I can see that. So that would be Ethereum from today doing like a, you know, 9 to 10X. And then we do like a 9 to 10 multiplier. It actually matches up. It actually just basically goes back to the all-time high of the Pulse versus ETH ratio from a year ago. It actually is it. Okay, so also this is big, big, big news. Chainlink could be a whopping $400 to $600 as well. Now, here's the thing, friends. What, what I'm looking at this, I'll show you the chart here. This is emergency bullish news, but like I'm still scared, man. It's a third cycle. It's third cycle curse, but I also got to remind you, friends, uh, the, he's basically he's not sold on a traditional normal cycle that we've seen. He's basically like, 
we end up doing the super, super cycle. What does that really mean? What does a super cycle mean? Like, friends, it, it could be where next year, like Bitcoin hits 120 and then it's back down to 90 and then the bull market, we just go sideways next year. You know what I mean? We could we could do that. We could do that. But everyone thinks it's like euphoria, but we just go sideways next year. You know what I mean? And we're like sitting there confused, like, wait, is it over? Is it not over? We didn't see as much euphoria, but the prices are high. You know what I mean? We're just shaking our heads. And then 2026, we continue. And then we run all the way. You know, that's possible. We run all the way to the end of 2026. So the most important part is that we're in. We're in and we're just waiting to see obviously what happens. So Chainlink being $400, $600, that'd be amazing. I mean, like, um, but look, I don't want to just price everything off a $29,000 Ethereum because that is like so orgasmic. I'd rather just be like, okay, what's $10,000 ETH? Okay, $10,000 ETH? Sweet. Okay, give me $200 link. $10,000 ETH, by the way, is also huge for Pulse Chain, Pulse X and Hex and everything else. Okay, there will also be all the other narratives and stuff. He's also a believer, friends, in the DeFi returning. He's like basically, you know, Aave, Uni Synthetics, and like everyone, like you shouldn't be shocked if you're watching my channel. They are cycle two narratives now. They're not number three. Number two, you're good for one more pump. Sure, you don't get you another 1,000x, but you do nice returns in this second cycle, okay? So why this is all amazing is Richard Hart called for $240,000 Bitcoin. So friends, that was a data point. That was a data point. But Richard kind of capitulates out of his bear moment. And you're like, yeah, well, you know, could have been wrong or maybe too optimistic. I'm like, okay, I'm seeing more now. And I'm like saying, okay, there's, there's a case being built here. Now, what was most interesting, why I'm even paying attention to it is because, do you remember I made the surveys for you last year, friends? The retailer's average bull market target for Bitcoin, the average, okay, you average everyone out, it's $120,000 Bitcoin, one, two, zero, okay? And I told you, I go, look, either we're going to stop at 80 and trap everybody, 80 to 90, or we're going to blow to 240. I told you that. So either like, and it's such a perfect trap. Either way, the retailers lose. They either, they it, look, they either hold too long and they can't sell, then we stop at 80. It's a bear market. It's wrecked, okay? We do the super dark prophecy. Or they sell at 80 to 100, it bursts through and they sit back and then it goes to 200 to 220 and then retail firm is back in, back up there later on. You know, it might take like a year. Obviously, you and I, we want this to happen in a period of 60 days and stuff, but most likely it's going to take quite a while <clears throat> to do that. So two credible people with these forecasts, be ready for anything. Remember the crowd expecting that 120K Bitcoin on average. So hitting 240K is now the weak spot of the firmo buyers. For us, we've got nothing to worry about there. We're going to be fine. Absolutely fine. The retailers, right, and them getting trapped, we're just going to hold still, okay? But like I said, man, I know there's just numbers flying around, friends. Like, remember I told you, I know what's running through your mind. You're like, hey, I've been listening to my friend Sami for a year now, and he basically said, if we get this scenario, every single person listening to this is wealthy. Not just, re like, you have absolutely crushed it. Like, the paper hand has crushed it, the absolute paper hand. So I hope, man, I hope, I hope. I hope we get that scenario. I don't know. <clears throat> so this is a super cycle of sorts. And remember, I told you, friends, I know they're going to get trapped. I just don't know how. I just, we're going to get trapped. But it's funny. Maybe get trapped to the upside. We'll see. So now, look, friends, normally when you hear the words super cycle, it's time to literally sell everything. So normally that's what you want to do, friends. You see the super cycle, sell everything because that's normally bull market stuff. But look, I'm just being honest now. Super cycle is the outsider chance. And it makes sense because everyone has PTSD from the word super cycle from the last cycle. And like, okay, this is the one that goes longer and slower. It, it's kind of making sense, right? Because you're watching the Bitcoin price chart and you're like, hmm, you aren't doing stuff like before. Like, and it, it makes sense, right? We're doing stuff like, hey, you run up six monthly candles and you go on sideways. Maybe there's going to be Bitcoin halving crash further and stuff, you know, but you know, something's about here different. Like, and look, it's linked to the stock market, the S&P 500 going up. We know that. But there's an undertone here, friends, like AI, man. It could be like AI. It's just the AI and the GDP contribution from AI is just accelerating the markets, pricing it in. Don't forget this happened with the internet technology as well in the 1990s. So that's pretty much what happened there. So the part that catches most people right, would be a standard four-year cycle or even a cycle that runs all the way to Q4 of 2025. So basically by the end next year. Or remember I told you, <clears throat> but also I've got to throw in there, friends. It's also, you know, I mean, I want, I want this. Remember, Dark Prophecy, like 2024 could be the shocker year. You know, where we just like, 
Like everybody FOMOs in the next few months, they're buying Bitcoin at 80K, thinking, okay, we're definitely going 100 this year. And then we finish poop by the end of this year. And everyone's like, oh, they're in the game. Maybe they throw, let's ban self custody. Maybe the government gets scared because Bitcoin's near 100K. They're like, shit, we gotta, we got to clamp down on this. So that when they're doing is, you know, that scares everybody. And then I tell everybody, hey, guys, they fudded us down real hard 2024. That means two years of up only, baby. And that'll be like so contrarian, all right? But I guess we'll see. We'll see. So remember, he also believes, right, about a big mean reversion. So he calls it the big mean reversion play. So that big mean reversion play, friends, that refers to, luckily, like we are friends, I've mentioned to you, that's cycle two narratives. So narratives from the old season that you know exist. Aave, Uni, Hex is part of it. Alt layer ones, which is Pulse Chain. Dex is like Pulse X, right? They have a return back, a return back to DeFi and a yield stuff. But, you know, obviously, just be careful with, like, betting on these and the timing of these. This could always this could always be next year. You don't know, right? So it's not like, oh, I don't want to fade AI and do all this other stuff. But you won't need cheap prices in them. But it's just something to think about, okay? <clears throat> and, uh, yes, to be following my channel, friends, you know, we've been speaking about a lot of these concepts already. We're betting for them. You don't know. You just don't know, okay? So if this happens, right, you can bet we're going to see a very powerful Pulse Chain, Pulse X, Hex, Ink combo. And I'm just, I'm wondering, right, if DeFi if Hex will be returned to that, it should T-Rex. If all my theories and everything saying, I'm like, look, the market's pricing Hex like a DeFi altcoin. So if we see DeFi go up with Ethereum, remember it's it's yield hunting. It makes sense that it'll go up with it as well. We're not there yet, okay? But we'll see, okay? So even if the poop scenario happens, friends, which is like crazy. Remember, my poop scenario is like, sweet, I'll take that all day. Poop scenario is a freaking $12,000 ETH. His, his poop is $12,000 ETH. I'm like, well, you're basically pretty much gonna crush it. You can just do a multiplier on that. So, um, what if you want? If you want to do basic maths, you're just like, okay, whatever ETH does, I guess Pulse Chain, Pulse X, and Hex will do like a five X from that. By the way, that's still a failure if we do that. That's under the all-time high from last year, from from May 2023 launch. So just showing you how conservative it is. If you think ETH does. Yeah, three X from here, at, we can do fifteen, which is pretty much friends. Like I said to you, some people got like you know, if you have like one year invested, one year, man, and you make like a fifteen X from here, man, that's fifty. If you, that's fifteen X, just a fifteen X. Imagine we do like a thirty X from here. That's thirty years you don't have to work. So that's pretty, pretty powerful. So shout out to Mister Armadillo for this. I know it just makes everyone more bullish and stuff, but just look, we don't know, friends. All these mini cycles, all these old seasons happening, things changing back and forth. There are no full guarantees. All I know is, though, the people are revolting against the VCs. People are making more meme coins, more stories, more narratives, more rehypothecation. We're trying out all these things. Aren't you glad you got a friend like me? Let's see what happens next, right? Like, subscribe, bell button, I'll catch you soon.